Penny candy. Apocalypse. Yeah. I liked Oscar Isaac as Apocalypse. Yeah. I don't like what they did with him, but I feel like when you have an actor like Oscar, Oscar Isaac, he's going to act the shit out of whatever you hand him. Mm -hmm. And he did. I was intimidated every time he opened his mouth. I wasn't so intimidated by his power set because it was inconsistent. Mm -hmm. One moment he can control sand and cut people's hands off. The next minute he doesn't do that again. Yeah, he just never does. Just never does it again. He doesn't. He does a lot of things once, and it was a fuzzy uh, decapitation. Mm -hmm. It was like, and it was like blurry mm -hmm. because PG thirteen. Yeah, yeah. They didn't really do him. They didn't do Apocalypse any justice, and yeah. it hurt my heart because Apocalypse is my favorite villain. Mm -hmm. Of all time. His pontificating wasn't. Like, it wasn't. I am the rocks of the eternal shore. Yeah, no. I am the rocks of the eternal shore. Crash against me and be broken! Yeah, it wasn't megalomaniac. It wasn't. It was more. He had badass moments now. Yeah, he had badass moments. He was just. It was just. It was boring apocalypse. Yeah, it was kind of like, I'm back and I guess I want to do this? Yeah. It was, yeah. I'm tired. Yeah, it was kind of like, <laughs> I'm, I really need a nap apocalypse. Right. Designed their clothes. Yeah, a lot. Oh. Like, <laughs> like, like, except for Sai, like, I feel like those were her clothes. Yeah. Because she doesn't yeah, have the same really armor of, on her. She didn't, they didn't have enough time. She she was kind of pulling like in. She was the second one. Oh. It was Storm, Psylocke, then Angel. Then Magneto. Oh, yeah, Magneto was last. Mm -hmm. They had time. He had time for Angel's fit. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought Psylocke was third. I thought Angel was second. No, Psylocke helped them find Angel. I thought Psylocke helped them find Magneto. No! Okay, whatever. Because <laughs> remember, Storm was with Magneto, was with Apocalypse when they found Psylocke. Yeah, of course Storm was with But Apocalypse. she was the only one. Yeah, Storm. Then Psylocke, Psylocke then, then Angel. Angel. You said you were- You just said Angel! I didn't. Play it back. I thought Psylocke was third. I thought Angel was second. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Olivia Munn waited forever to play this role. And yeah. when she finally does, she has some pretty good fight scenes. The fight scene between her and Beast is pretty cool. Um, but that's it! That's all she does! Yeah. And we get Storm, and they cut some of her shit again, like they do in all the movies. Mm -hmm. Um, but- I felt like Alexandra ship really, I think we need to get off Alexandra ship. I really, I think, it, I'm saying this here and now, back the fuck up off Alexandra ship. Again, here we are. This has nothing to do with her. If they wrote a better movie and gave her better things to do, mm -hmm. we wouldn't care how light skinned she is. Mm -hmm. She's a black girl playing a black character. Yeah. I, I'm not seeing the issue. I'm not. I know that there, there's a history of colorism in yeah. Hollywood, and it is. Yeah. But at this juncture, they had to get somebody that looked like Halle Berry. Yeah. For some semblance of continuity. I don't, I don't hate Alexander like Ship. She does. She did what she had to do. She, she worked hard. She actually, her accent is way better than Halle Berry. Oh my god, it's so good. Um. And <laughs> yeah, she tries. She really she tries. tries. She tries every time she's on screen, and I feel it. She cut off her. She 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 shaved her head mm -hmm. and put on a, a a storm mohawk wig to be in this movie. Mm -hmm. Dedication. Can't hate that. Yeah. Had you had all this potential and it was misused, but the potential is seen. Like we can see it. Mm -hmm. We hear Oscar Isaac speaking, and it's like holy shit, he sounds good. Yeah. But then he's this tall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and kind of looks. He doesn't uh, like. Sounds intimidating, but doesn't terribly look intimidating. No, he doesn't. I mean, he sounds bigger than he is. Purple, so it really almost... Is it purple? Blue, purple. is like kind of a really... Yeah, it's kind of mm, riding that bluish purple area. And... I hate the Ivan Ooze connection. I hate when people do that. <laughs> yeah, but it just makes him less... It did. Intimidating, actually. It did. I actually like the design of the costume itself. Yeah, the like the, with all the Egyptian, bad. the hieroglyphs and mm -hmm. all that. It looked really good, but I, it wasn't It wasn't big. I didn't want to make him gray, which is what he is. Yeah, he I know it's, it's hard to read that. On, it's hard to like that and everything. 
I'm yes. sure they had to figure that out. They said we got blue down. Like we got beast and the sneak. Yeah, we got the blue down. There's like a blue. lot of blue X Men, and if they weren't gonna go with that blue ashy, with like kind of like the, with the lips being oh, even darker and him having like that just chiseled face, chiseled face, where everything sort of his face yeah. is a hieroglyph. Which yeah, is, he looks very yeah. He looks yeah. He has that, that hieroglyphic look, you right? Which is which is why I like the character so much. Yeah, he's so black mm -hmm. in the face mm -hmm. in the in the books. Mm -hmm. you know, he's, his wide nose, this really square chin, yeah, and just these huge features and that that drawn mouth, yeah, which is so alien. Which is what they needed. They needed those extra those little atten attention yeah. to detail that would have made him look more like Apocalypse Run than what he looked like. Yeah. And yeah. I think that was the disconnect for me with Apocalypse. But I really, I did like Ice Star Isaac as Apocalypse. Oh, the Astral Plane was a great scene. Mm -hmm. It was a great scene. It was good seeing Professor X getting uh, beat around. You're in my house now. <laughs> Again, again, a good scene that just did not go far yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, they could have been taking that <laughs> so far. That whole final scene could have been on the astral plane. It, it would have been, so, been great. It would have been great. Like we didn't need Phoenix at the end of it. We, like, I mean, it was fine. But we and didn't. I understand that it's a team story, so they wanted to kind of end it with that team effort. But it's. You don't need that all the time with X-Men. X-Men is often not that. Oftentimes, yeah. it's like the half the team is just trying to hold back whatever is right. happening, and the one person with the power to do what needs to be done just does it, yeah. you know? Sometimes they combine. And sometimes they combine, but like, but not Professor really. X and Jean Grey on the, on the astral plane with, um... Yeah, that could have gone nuts. That could have gone oh, nuts! <laughs> but... It, yeah, we got it. Because we expected it after he lays back, after Professor X lays back down, is like, thank you for letting me in. And we thought we were about to get Professor X in armor. Yeah, and like, you know, asteroid playing <laughs> Professor X. Yeah. Yeah, and, I th and then. And still got his ass they wiped. You know, they shoe shoehorn in the Phoenix. Ugh. And that was fine. It was, it. you know what? After we after we discovered, okay, Professor X is not going to do this astral plane thing. Mm -hmm. Not gonna do it. What are we gonna get? We're gonna get Phoenix. And yeah. when they did it, it was good. Like yeah, it was like, good. oh, that's good. And then we got Storm stepping in to help, and we had Cyclops, and everybody was in there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is good. This is this is a good this is a good mm -hmm. scene. Yeah. Where is it going? And it kind of just we disintegrating him because mm -hmm. ooh, sorry. Because <laughs> yeah, the I'm not. For me, I I even all the shit I'm talking about it, I still enjoyed it more than I like first class. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. That opening scene is better than the entirety of first class. That opening scene is <laughs> really good. The it's opening so scene is crazy. Good! That is one I was like, okay, maybe this movie will be good. Oh, shit. And then more receptive. Okay. But, I mean, I don't really hate this movie. I really don't. It's just not one of my favorites. I, I think, for me, it's higher on my list than it would be on other people's lists. Yeah, it's real low on my list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, um, we got Deadpool and Deadpool Two, and oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, and those were just really deviated from the X Men, which Deadpool does thing, yeah. and which Deadpool does, and it was Deadpool. Yeah, we so it's Deadpool hard guys. to really count them as X Men movies, but, they are. but we got Deadpool, yeah. um, <laughs> and they were they restored. The honor of Deadpool with the really movies, because holy shit, X Men Origins really put that in the shitter. Man, what Ryan Den Ryan Ryan Reynolds, what Ryan Reynolds did, that was risky on Fox's part, but it was also risky for Ryan Reynolds because if he fucked it up, that would have been it. I think we would have been done with Ryan Reynolds because he did so well and because it was paced so well, because it was acted so well. Because it was choreographed so well, you know, even the parts where they the budget was shot, they were like, okay, we're all, we're over budget. So how do we make this work? The, like the scene where he forgot the guns in the car.
damn it! I'm gonna do this the old-fashioned way. With two swords and maximum effort. Hear the music. And when you're sitting there, it was funny, but yeah. then when you find out that that's why he left the, the, the guns, mm -hmm. it so breaks the fourth wall again. Every character in those films is developed well, everybody is... Maybe the villain in the first one is not so much developed that great. I wish we got more Shatterstar in Deadpool 2, because uh, he looked great. <laughs> he yeah. looked great. It would have been nice to get more of those characters. I thought, like, when it first happened, um, their death, death their right very up. quick death, mm -hmm. um, I was kind of, I was let down, but then I was like, what can I expect from this movie? Like, what's about I, to happen? What, like, yeah. And what time should I, people. like, I just, I was just happy that they didn't kill Domino, because if they would have killed Domino too, I would have been like, Fuck this movie! Yeah. This is the worst. But yeah. yeah, they they. But they couldn't because of her powers. Yeah. She yeah exactly. You can't just kill. She's literally she's that's so like, OP. In that's like killing Darwin. She's so OP. Well, you can kill Domino. Yeah, but it, it just <laughs> to kill her in the ways that they were killing no. those people would be like killing Darwin. An another moment where I thought we were gonna get Mr. Sinister. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought maybe the, the the guy that was running the the kids the house with the kids and I thought maybe he was gonna morph and become Mr. Sinister. I thought, yeah, I, I was expecting that. Yeah, I was expecting something to good that to go a little bit further. Than yeah, it did. I mean, it, they were about the same on the same level. As sure. Was. Oh no, they were they were equally as good. Yeah, which you know, because the first one's an origin movie and then the second one is more about Cable's issues. Yeah, and fun. a lot about you know the fact. That it, so much money. <laughs> so much money. On a very small budget. Yeah. Comparatively. <laughs> now see Strife I'm here for. <laughs> just silly Strife, just like Yeah. <laughs> but he can move really <laughs> good. That's true. Sure. <laughs> that's And that's that nineties nineties yes. um It is. Drawing oh, art and writing style of just Whatever! Chris he was silver spikes. You're right. So, the last Fox X-Men movie, which is both sad and gratifying. Yeah, it's like a culmination of, at this point, a lot of us had gone through such an emotion, such an emotional roller coaster that Never if you're like that. me, you were tired a little bit. A little so, bit. I knew I was going to see this movie. I just, you know, it was kind of like, I didn't. hey, let's do it. Let's get this over with. It kind of felt like that. You know, I, I think my thing was when Disney finally bought Fox, I was shocked. Mm -hmm. I knew something was going to happen, but I didn't think they were just going to buy it right out. Yeah. I thought they were going to buy a couple of the franchises or yeah. something, but they bought Fox. Yeah. I, wanna, yeah. I don't want to go in chronological order with it because it's a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but can we at least start at the beginning? Because <laughs> the beginning is... One point of something, just something I want to point out. It's, There's a lot of stuff that happens at the beginning that I think needs to be pointed out. Yeah. Because it's, it's a half and half moment. Yeah. It really is. It, the movie just kind of opens up Ugh. and we're, um, and we don't get like a danger room scene. We don't get a, you know, mutants. Man. In the genetic code, you know. They couldn't that. call Patrick Stewart just this last we time. We didn't get any of that. Oh, What's so what? noticeable? Wow, there's no intro. Okay. And then we got uh, what I thought was about to be The Conjuring coming on. Oh, yeah, we got like, it was like Dark Phoenix. <laughs> and it was like, yeah. the music was nice yeah. because it's Hans Zimmer. It's Hans Zimmer, yeah. So, so. It's great. But it was like, oh. Uh, it was scary movie intro. It was yeah. The Exorcist. We open up to Jean Grey. Jean Grey is a little girl. A little girl. She's um, in driving the car with her parents. Um, they get into a car accident after, you know, arguing about what's on the um, radio and Jean Grey's kind of changing it with her telekinetic powers and I guess this is kind of the first time they're emerging, maybe? Or, um, spoilers, by the way. Yeah, just spoilers. Spoilers. The car um, barrels into a oncoming fruit truck or something, like big wooden... It was truck. a rig. Yeah. And he did not stop. He did not stop. Um, they flipped <laughs> over and... They did. Yeah, supposedly. Yeah. 
Yeah, so her mother dies, or yeah, their parent, the parents die. Mm -hmm. So we and, think. Yeah, so we think the parents die. And um, uh, Charles Xavier comes, tells her her parents died, and she, he's gonna take her. And, and they she's go off, and they're special, and it's all this stuff a decent like that. Scene when he was talking yeah, it's, not, it's not a terrible opening scene, it's just we didn't get those, those things. Yeah. So this is 1992. Sure. And there is a spaceship that is in distress, and the X-Men mm -hmm. have to go save it. They jump in the X-Jet, there's not much discussion. It's really there just jump in the X-Jet, bam, we're in the space. It was very short. It was yeah. like, uh, there was can we get up there, Beast? Uh, I don't know. And then Mystique is like, oh, we're going to space. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. Jean Grey comes in contact with the Phoenix while trying to save the people. The thing. Um, the thing. The thing. Uh, the solar flare. Um, and Nightcrawler had a really good scene in, the, the, yeah. in that moment. Everybody did. I think everybody is, uh, yeah. got a moment. I think, I think one scene that people always forget um, when I'm looking at reviews is Cyclops going down and shooting his visor through oh, yeah. this sort of cannon. Yeah, this which is X -Gen cannon. very X-Men yeah. toy. Yeah. Epic. Like it's like, um, watch as Cyclops goes down in the X-Gen and shoots things. It's like, I'm gonna get you guys. Like it's very bad, which I enjoy. <laughs> Evidently they hired Dazzler to come perform. Yeah. Which, sidebar, yeah, which sidebar, everybody's bitching about Dazzler singing a modern song in 1992, when everything now sounds like 1992 music, so shut up. I mean, <laughs> shut up. that didn't really bother me. Um, I didn't I even mean, notice it, like it sounds like shit that came yeah. out in 1992 and shit that comes out now. So. Most of those people weren't even there in 1992. Facts. I mean, come on. Cyclops is drinking with Jean and she drinks both of their drinks and he has to go get another drink. And Storm is evidently the bartender of the X-Mansion for some reason. They can hire Dazzler, but they can't hire the bartender <laughs> at this uh, luau. Yes, have ice. With this luau. And uh, Cyclops, as, don't ask, just says, rocks. Storm holds out her hand and creates ice cubes. Now, I'm pretty versed on the Storm power set. And in these movies, she has always been nerfed. Mm -hmm. She's been nerfed to death. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, in Apocalypse, I'm not Apocalypse, in Dark Phoenix, she can do everything. <laughs> yeah. She can do all Whatever the things. Whatever needed to be done, she can pretty all much the do it. So this bitch decides, okay, sure, I'm gonna make ice cubes. And not just ice. Cubes! Cubes, like perfect cubes. Perfect cubes. Cool. At this point, I was like, okay, so where are we going with this? Yeah. I still don't... I still felt like there was something missing from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie. And I don't know if I've ever put my finger quite on what it it's was. Maybe the pulse of the movie or it's the energy in the movie? The movie stops. Yeah. To follow Gene around. True. We got that Jean Grey can't control this, and she needs, right. and she doesn't know what's happening very much. But then she can. Yeah, and, and then she can fly. True. Yeah, because she can just kind of do stuff, yeah. and I don't know. It was. It's a yeah. of something. Because then we get the aliens. Oh. Oh, and this is like I felt like this was a nod. I felt like this was a little bit of a Chris Claremont nod because they kind of. Cut to this home where they're just having a nice dinner party on, yeah. on, on like this beach house where they're like kind of in this nice dinner party and you know Jessica Chastain's at the head of the table and she get and she the ends dogs, up, the, the dogs the barking table. so she goes and checks on them outside and of course the body snatching aliens um, are taking over the party yeah and they just basically uh, she goes back and. Um, they basically take over the bodies of the whole whole party. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, the, the the and they turn out to be the Debari, which is, I guess, it's in the comics. It's in the comics, so it's but it's a little known fact. But yeah, it's like in the comics, those are the species that 
Jean Grey actually wiped out with her Phoenix powers. Yeah. So that's why the Shi'ar were chasing her. Yeah. Because she killed the planet of the Dabari. Yeah. But they were like, oh, this thing is so powerful. Yeah. Either we're going to destroy it or use it. Yeah. And so that, was, that was it. So that turned into the, the, the storyline being the mix of, kind of of the Dabari mm -hmm. and the Shi'ar um, the ideas. When they just could have done the Shi'ar, Jessica Chastain is basically she is an exposition dump through the whole movie, yeah. and she just she just she, I'm gonna show you why we're doing this, and then right. she shows this the entity destroy mm -hmm. the planet, which is not really how it happened. Jean Grey was the phoenix; she ate the the sun. The sun exploded. The sun destroyed the planet. Captain, the creature is still alive. Not only alive, but feeding, feeding on a star. Engine room, pull forward, now! But we didn't get that. We yeah. got the Dabari are pissed, we're gonna use it or kill it, but now it's in you, mm -hmm. so figure it out. Yeah. And they were pretty ruthless for an alien race who is so, I didn't get you know, powers. concerned about humanity? Or their humanity, at least. Well, they weren't humans. True. Their Dabari ity? <laughs> <laughs> so, and Mystique shows up and um, she she gets dead. Basically, she <laughs> talks it in. She robotically tries to <laughs> connect to the Gene. entity. Gene, help us. We really we love, love you. you. We are Our family. I told I you I love my sisters you. and me. It was terrible. Focus on my voice. I'm not giving up on you, Jean. You're my family, Jean. Stop. No matter what. Stop. 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 I thought she was phoning in an apocalypse. This is right. She was like, <laughs> she was checked out. She checked was like, out. this is my final scene. Girl. Yeah. Let's get this over with. And I cheered. And, and it was kind of, <laughs> it was really kind of a high point because I think, and that was the problem with it because people, it was really kind of given to you with this moment where of this we're supposed to be so sad heartache and we're supposed to be so sad but we you killed the one character that almost everybody wants out anyway yeah, like we're done. we saw the shitty professor Xavier that mm -hmm. we know from the comics yeah. you know we, we, we saw that the, in there and I guess yeah, that was someone that liked yeah it was, that was one of the highlights of the movie yeah. showing that he was a he was his arc that he's not so good yeah that his yeah. arc was I'm trying to do something good then he go he gets crippled and he can't control his powers anymore in Days of Future Past and he sort of has this low moment and then he comes back in Apocalypse sort of back into the swing of it but just trying to teach his students again mm -hmm. and then Apocalypse comes and fucks up everything again and they sort of get good relations on good relationships with with uh, save the, the world the world yeah because they saved the world from Apocalypse and then now they're celebrities mm -hmm. you know now they're first defense. Mm -hmm. against threats this size and he sort of he, he gets out of control with him. Mm -hmm. The train scene was literally the best part of the movie. The it train was, scene it was and when movie. Gene was wiping people out. Like that those yeah. scenes were holy yeah. shit. Yeah. They got apprehended by the MCU <laughs> um mutant control unit. Mutant control unit. Which yeah, because it's always <laughs> been mutant control um agency. Yeah, I think it was MCA, yeah, or something like that, in the other ones, but, um... And, and Deadpool, it was something else, it was mutant something, it was it was something else in Deadpool, too. Hmm. But, anyway, um, yeah. great scene! Yeah, we get Nightcrawler really kicking ass, Storm oh kicking ass. Oh my god, Nightcrawler goes off. Like, oh! And I guess since it's an alien race, they're all like, well, just fuck it, we're gonna kill him. We're like, gonna we're gonna go ahead, yeah. everybody kills. There, everybody kills them. They, this is the pissed off X Men. I'm <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, this is like that scene in the cartoon when they were captured by Mister Sinister mm -hmm. and they were sick of his shit. <laughs> they were full. They were in the Savage Land and they were full oh, sick of yeah. his shit. And when they broke free, baby, they let them have it. That is one of the best scenes in that cartoon. Yeah, yeah. And this is just that moment again. It's it's so good. Yeah. They it's just, so good. Yeah, yeah, those great Nightcrawler moments. Storm has some decent moments. Yeah. Um, and then Jean Grey gets yeah. out there and she twists the, the, the thing and then she, she goes down there and basically yeah, wipes the floor with the Dabari. She full power and she just basically just dissipates everybody. Yeah. Um, 
or whatever. Um, Dragon Ball Hadoukens. Like she, she does a lot of Hadoukens. She's like, yeah. like yeah, like she does a lot of that. Um, slides across the ground. Oh, so good. <laughs> like, she was flying, yeah. boy. Like she was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. great. Yeah. She was Goku. Yeah, it was. It was very <laughs> that. Um, Kamehameha! Yeah. It's over 9,000! What 9,000? And you can tell that the reshoots were the beginning and the end. Because they were almost completely different movies from the middle of the movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Once that train scene got up, you were like, oh, this is, this is like a different movie. It was dark, and then it was um, like, oh, oh, this is finally Dark Phoenix. Great. Mm -hmm. Now, the Dark Phoenix movie I wanted, of course, was more of an exorcist movie. I wanted Gene to be fucking gone. <laughs> Because with her, a step further in a creepy, sort of broken direction mm -hmm. would have been Enchantress from... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think Famke's performance yeah. as Dark Phoenix oh my God. was so like, much more intense. When, when she's like on, in the medical bay with, um, with Wolverine and she like gets up and she like is all sexualized and yeah. she like walks out the walks out of there and it's just like she's just a whole different person. You can feel it. It needs to be rated R. This movie oh, needed to be rated R. Yeah. To to go where it needs to go, it needs to be rated R. Um, there needs to be a much stronger connection between Gene and Cyclops. Um, like Gene and Cyclops. Yeah. I saw what they were trying to do. They tried, they tried to give you a it little was more. It was very flimsy because. You so anyway, um, what would you rate this movie? From like, let's do one out of ten. One out of ten. Because that's weird. But like, a, a one out of from one out of ten. One being the best. You know? No, ten being the best. When I... I think somebody first asked me, um, on, like I was just talking to the people that I know, and uh, they asked me to rate it, and I think I gave it a six out of ten. That's not bad. And that was looking... After talking about it now, I really think I want to change it back, ten, pull it back to maybe like a five. Maybe like okay. a five out of ten. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it there. I'll keep it there. I, it, it's in that range. It's in a four to six. Okay. Um, it's a solid seven for me, only because. <sighs> Listen, the MCU bought it. Mm -hmm. It was going to be phoned in. Yeah. Either it was going to be phoned in or it was going to be magnificent, and there was really there's really no in between for it. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm Damien. This is. Jared. My boyfriend Jared and we will be doing this every week. Different stuff. Um, we're gonna have all kinds of stuff for you. Um, so comment, like, subscribe, share, follow us on Instagram at Penny Candy Show. Um, and um, we'll, we'll have our Facebook get our Patreon up and running soon. But we want to get some videos out. So uh, like, comment, share, do all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time.